hi, this is Mary Ang. This is a crack in my electrical socket. So you see, you can get electricity there, but it's probably unsafe to do so. Um, I'm gonna go through this apartment really fast, showing some things. This is uh, too big for the unit refrigerator, which is on a, a power switch for like a light. That's the broken light. That's where the missing uh, carbon monoxide tester is. That's over here. This, um, no batteries. This is an exposed uh, fire hazard wood panel that has been cited by Tim Samples as a code violation of fire safety hazard. It replicates over here, this bad wood here, but in the process of plugging in the too big fridge that uh, bolts off the circuit, um, and unplugging it in order to make coffee or use the tea kettle because of the circuit problems. Uh, this is uh, the jiggly, scary, scary, scary electricity. Um, this is the unfire safe door. This is a very thin, paper thin door. Um, it's like a, could easily be pushed in. This is where we were uh, denied our second lock feature on the uh, early March, one month after moving in, we lost security here. Um, this is the key, former key to the old apartment next door where the circuit breaker is. There was an informal arrangement to enter that apartment. I have reported that to police. It makes me feel unsafe that um, I would be expected to enter a property which I have no lease for. Then there is the new key for that apartment. This is a, an exposed uh, non-functional light with this dysfunctional light. This up here is a, a hole in the, the, I think they call it the log nut or the death, some kind of a patch should be covering that really old box. As you can see, there are no lights. So when the landlord tried to evict me for using lights, that's not cool either because we don't have consistent or stable electricity. I never pulled internet here because of the constant power interruptions I thought would damage the modem potentially. This is where there's been some burning in the, the heater, um, very musty, moldy smell. There had been caked uh, lead paint. I was told by the apartment manager, Sean Rafington, do not use this because asbestos and lead are probably what make us feel sick when we use that. Additionally, we have a heater um, lined up. It's on right now. This is probably unsafe. It says tension, um, caution, high voltage, no handle, no cover. Um, that is uh, for the heater. This is the bathtub. This is um, wood paneling, soaks up the moisture. It's been covered with paint. I tried to clean the mold off when I arrived. I cleaned the black mold off the ceilings. Um, this is wood. This is some kind of paneling that doesn't seem proper to be covered with paint. We've got chipped paint in the shower. Um, the floors slant this way. Water, despite the shower curtain, seems to pool there, create black mold that was there when we got there. This sink was stopped up when we got here with a chicken chunk. There was food in the shower because the people were washing their dishes in the, in the shower because of the lack of a kitchen or sanitation facilities. This is pretty disgusting stuff down here. I've got it plugged up to prevent the bad odors. There's black mold behind the wooden tank. Um, the wooden tank cover, which is so totally weird to have a wooden tank cover. Um, you can see the mold back there. Um, let's see, the floor sags in, there's urine staining dead there. It's impossible to get rid of the stink, it's foul. Plus there's foul odors coming up. There are also flat foul odors coming up from these pipes that uh, emit terrible, terrible gases. That's the falling in uh, ceiling over there, over our neighbor's bedroom and illegal windowless code violation bedroom. Um, a lot of construction mess from the construction workers who weren't paid when they told me about the code violations. Coming back into the unit, um, the floor, the walls themselves don't even seem stable. I leaned on this shelf and it fell down because the walls are so mushy, marshy. This 
balcony um, was covered with moss. I tried to demoss it as best as I could. There's no lighting out here. Uh, the owner said he would provide a solar light. There has been stagnant water in that gutter. I have told the, man, the owner about it for the last month or so. It just continues to stay there. The gutter's blocked up. And down there are the cracked sewer pipes, the illegal water heater, and the fires have been in that that unit and that two unit the unit next door to me twice and the downstairs unit that has the um, extreme ceiling falling in you can see that there's an extreme sag on the floors uh, the floors kind of shake when you walk on them everything slides that way it may do be due to the foundation um, sinking in the sewage pit that is developed under the foundation. Um, see, code violation-wise, I don't know that having no lighting in either room is necessarily kosher. Um, we had an entering of the apartment without permission um, yesterday. I caught the owner doing this. I'm going to try to block off the name of the person who had to have her privacy violated, her lock was never working. I mean, those are her problems. And then down here you can see the deep sloping of the floor downward and the downstairs neighbor slams the ceiling since we moved in in February really loud. And then unit 12 is just an atrocity. And I decided when I saw it I would never well, it's just atrocious, atrocious. And um, if I can help you, that's that. This is a fire safe proper door. This is not. Um, the only real consistent lighting is in the bathroom. Um, the shower leaks down below on the tenants down below. I had confirmation yesterday that that leaking we discovered in April has gone for the whole month of April and the whole month of May. And that's appalling. Hmm. Other than that, there's the Pacific Ocean that way, which is totally cool. Um, this is just more like a safety hazard, easy to clunk the head and not much closet space. And I mean, you can even see the disrepair of the roof is in. You've got a lot of um, kind of moss, moss accumulating. Those apartments have a, a circuit breaker box behind the building, which is exposed to the public, the general public. That's definitely a security concern for them as far as I'm concerned. And this seems to be the best outlet we have. We only have two outlets in this room and two outlets which are damaged and fire hazards in that room. Consequently, we put all our electronics in storage because we have been told that some people have lost as much as $1,000 worth of electronics in this building over a few years and that fire and smoke issues from them. I do notice when I unplug the fridge, which causes my food to spoil in order to use this tea kettle to make tea, um, when I do a plug back in, there's usually a kind of a blue sparking. Sometimes, well, I don't see it now, so that's good. And we accidentally flipped this switch, but this is really the only uh, place I can put the fridge. But our food was melting, our ice cream was melting last night. Gorgeous fridge, I have to say, really gorgeous fridge for an economy fridge. But I've been told by numerous people, this circuit breaker cannot handle that type of unit. This is a 1912 building, causes constant power outages. The offending microwave that we, I was microwaving veggie burgers on is back at unit nine. Um, if, they can, if their circuit can handle it, um, it really upset the landlord that we were trying to microwave veggie burgers. It's kind of amazing to face adverse consequences for attempting to eat because it's a normal human behavior. And the apartment next door has those. The sewage pipes are wafting in to all three top units in the top of the house. You can see the roof is in quite disrepair as well. And um, the ceiling's still falling in over 